all right hello guys i'm smarty and in this video i'll be showing you how to improve your terrain in roblox studio now i've literally been using basically only terrain for my maps over the past year i've i basically not built any maps without terrain so the first tip you guys probably know this but if you don't you can actually change the color of your terrain so i have this flat piece of terrain here and uh, this is all grass so if I go ahead and click on the terrain object in workspace and open up the material colors property you click to expand that and then every material that there is you can change the color of it and um, so for example if I wanted my grass to be orange um, I can do that and this comes in really handy in like seasonal updates like for a fall update or a winter update you can quickly just change this to look kind of like snow or you know autumn type uh, leaves so yeah that's definitely one thing you should be doing you should be adjusting it so it looks uh good for the style of your game so of course i usually build in low poly so i'm gonna use a nice bright green and um yeah so the second tip i have is when you're building borders or hills that have that go up in like a 90 degree angle to the point where you get this um where you start seeing this uh, sort of dirt uh, siding here you actually don't want this um, it really doesn't look that good and what most people do is paint basalt or rock or some sort of rock on the sides of hills here so um, obviously this is already looking a lot better and this is just a really easy thing you can do to add a lot to your terrain and honestly you could just do this as like your only extra detail on your terrain and it would still look really good all right so for the next tip i recommend using basalt instead of rocks so what i've done here is i've used basalt um which is a material that's usually it usually comes in studio as black so like really dark 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 rock and this does not look good at all the only time when you're going to use this is when you're building like a volcano or something so most people just don't even touch this but when you change the color of it to gray this looks like an amazing rock material. Honestly, in my opinion, it's a lot better than the default one. Um, it's just a lot smoother looking, so it's a lot better for low poly builds, and um, it's just a lot cleaner looking. Um, another thing you can do is you can mix these together. In a lot of maps I build where I want more detail, or if I want, some, want it to look a little bit more different here and there, um, I just paint a little bit of rock on my basalt, and you know, it adds a little extra detail. This is especially good for realistic maps. So my next tip is actually just to, um, you know, set cobblestone, which is this sort of rocky material. Set this to the color of your rock and use this on the sides of hills and wherever. And you can kind of just mix this in. Uh, it's especially good when you're making caves because you can make the inside of the cave And if we go ahead and paint some cobblestone in there, this really looks a lot better than if we just had made this out of normal rock. Um, because there's a lot more like detail in this material. And rock is really bumpy, so it makes the ground really weird to walk on. So it's just a lot uh, better looking in my opinion. Um, I've seen Jailbreak use this a little bit too. That's kind of where I got the idea. All right, so next, um, I recommend actually, so you see how this is all grass? Well, each one of these little grass, um, grass blades is a triangle. So if I go ahead and go into wireframe rendering by going to view, wireframe rendering, or hitting, uh, I actually set a keyboard shortcut to this, which you can do in file, advanced, uh, customize shortcuts. So my shortcut is Shift Z, just like Blender. Um, if we go to wireframe rendering, we can see how the computer is like rendering this. So each one of these triangles is gonna be, you know, rendered by your computer. And usually we're trying to keep this down. So when you have a ton of these rendered at once, especially on mobile devices, this can actually cause some lag. Not that much, a decent amount of lag depending on the device you're on. And a good way to actually improve this, and in my opinion, make your terrain look a lot better and more varied, because this looks kind of plain. This is just the same thing over and over and over. So to make this look even more varied, just paint some leafy grass here and there. A lot of games like Bad Business do this when they use their 
uh, terrain in their maps. And instead of having grass everywhere, you have these patches of grass. Um, and there's there's a lot of this looks a lot better when you have other terrain mixed in, like a trail. Um, so if I go ahead and make a trail here, um, that 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 looks a lot better. But on its own, it looks kind of weird. So you know, especially near trails, this is and where players are going to be at. This is going to be just fine and might even look better in your game. My next tip is actually to paint lines of rock on hills. Um, so I've seen a lot of people do this. Basically what you do is you just grab your whatever rock material you like to use and you just kind of paint like little lines of rock. And what this does is it adds this really nice, you know, effect to hills. So instead of a hill just being, you know, just this big chunk of grass, we can paint lines of rock in here little dots and it just adds a lot to it and uh it honestly just looks a lot better than if you were to do this plane so my next tip is to make caves so no matter what map you're building usually it's a good idea to have a lot of places for players to explore and a really easy way to do that is um caves so you can add just add some caves here and there um in your maps and it just adds a lot to the environment and um, it's a pretty easy thing to add. So there's no reason really not to. Um, yeah, so the next tip is to add some rock formations. So what I be mean by this is in real life, rock kind of like forms in all these weird ways with like erosion and all kinds of stuff. Rock is just weird. So we want to kind of show that in our maps because it gives us a lot of like um, freedom to uh, add a lot of detail to the rock in our maps because you know, you know, it makes sense We can't have pillars of grass and have that make sense like this. This just looks weird. Like what? What is this dude? Okay? So to add these pillars of rocks and all that um, basically you just want to add um, you know uh, Little lines of rock little blobs of rock and you, you can set your base size of your grow tool to one or so and you just kind of add some weird looking rock formations a really good way to do this without it looking like super weird is by just making arches out of rocks and in my opinion it looks really really interesting so obviously it, like that that looks really cool and then what you can do is you can paint like some grass on here on the top here and uh, you know add some grass to the sides so already we're getting some pretty cool looking terrain like this looks like something I'd want to explore if I saw this in game All right, so next uh, is using sandstone for trails So you probably already saw me using this um, right here. You might have been wondering even what this material is It looks really nice, especially for low poly maps is a nice orangey color by default And I'm really not sure why not that many games use this because th this just looks really cool It's got cracks in it, and it's just really you know, it just matches well with low poly aesthetic. So yeah, if I compare this to mud, so mud is this really coarse looking, dirty, mucky looking material. I don't like it at all. Um, there's also ground, which is your other choice. This one matches okay. But as you can see out of the three of these, the smoothest looking one is the sand, and it's got these cracks here and there. If you don't like that, I guess the ground would be my second pick, but in my opinion, it's definitely the best material for trails and definitely for cartoony work. So, next, if you're adding water to your map, first of all, if you want if you want to add like little pools of water on top, go ahead and grab your paint tool, uh, turn the base size up just a little bit to like four or so, go to auto, and then um, grab your water um, material and just kind of paint some pools of water. Uh, this is the easiest way to add little pools of water, but you want to make sure you're painting this on flat terrain because otherwise this is going to be pretty uneven. So you can grab your flatten tool and turn off ignore water and you can just kind of flatten that out if you make the mistake of uh, painting this on non-flat terrain. But there is one issue that people run into when they're um, adding water to an area that's already carved out. So this, it carves out the area on its own. Um, also, you want to make sure you paint something down there you want you don't want grass underwater that's just weird i don't I, I don't like it when games do that so i usually paint ground or sand so uh the the, the issue i was talking about uh when you have an already carved out hole in your terrain uh, people run into an issue um what are you going to do about this 
Uh, adding water is not going to work. It is not going to work because it cuts away at your terrain. It just cuts away at it, right? It looks awful. So what uh, Roblox did is they made this tool called Sea Level. And this tool basically, it, it's really useful. You can add tons of water at once. And what you do is you just um, take out your Sea Level tool, drag these. So the only issue with it is these can literally spawn all the way across the map for you. They kind of spawn like right in the middle. It's really annoying. Um, but that's really the only issue. But what this does is it will add water everywhere but where there's already terrain. So that it's going to fill in this area with water. Oh yeah, here's another issue. Oh my. The... Oh, the handles on this like are too big. Oh no. I screwed this up, didn't I? <laughs> okay, just a second. All right, I got it, finally. Um, so you wanna position this in a way where you'll get the water in the space that you want. And you might have to subtract a little bit if you got corners in there um, just sticking out because the water will go anywhere where there's not already terrain. So after you do that, you just hit create. You can also do the opposite. You can uh, just remove all the water in a single area by hitting evaporate. I'm just gonna hit create and boom. We have, to, we have water. Uh, let me just take off that tool so you guys can see this. We have water um, put right where we wanted um, without removing any existing terrain. Um, and it's just nice. The only issue is you'll get some water like on the outside. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this just with my subtract tool. Ignore water off. A uh, little... Uh, there we go. So yeah, that's a really nice trick to add water to your map without obstructing anything um, and th those are the two best ways i found to do it but there's also the part two terrain plugin which is the last tip basically it's this plugin that lets you turn any part into terrain except for a mesh part unfortunately man we need we need to be able to turn mesh parts into terrain that would be awesome but um uh, we need a part and we need to just you know scale it to the size of terrain area that you want you can basically do any normal part i'm pretty sure you can do wedges spheres cylinders and blocks so let's just do a little test here so just go ahead and go to plugins and if you don't have it you can just go to plugins in the toolbox and search for it and install it to your roblox studio um so i'm gonna go ahead and find the part to terrain plugin it looks just like this and uh you just choose the t material that you want let me just resize this window. And um, you click on the part that you want to turn into terrain. Simple as that. But the only problem is this will replace any terrain that's already there, which is why I advise against using this for um, water or anything like that. Basically, this is mostly just good for adding, um, you know, that starting terrain. Like a giant, you can turn a base plate into terrain if you... Um, if you want to do that so i can just go ahead and turn my whole base plate into terrain if i want make sure to join my discord server link in the description you can chat with other developers there and uh, make sure to subscribe for more roblox studio tutorials